Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will be discussing a case scenario of bradycardia. So, a 56 year old male was rolled into ER with alleged history of odolem poisoning. The patient was conscious and oriented and the patient had complaints of light headedness. Uh, he, uh, his pulse rate was 45 per minute and he was connected to a cardiac monitor. His saturation was 98% uh, in room air and his BP was uh, 80 by 50 millimeters of mercury. So, he was initially connected to the cardiac monitor. And uh, during this time, like uh, we will do the parallel assessment of the airway breathing circulation. Uh, the patient was talking uh, in a full sentence, there was no signs of airway compromise. His breathing part was normal, uh, the uh, saturation was 98 percentage in room wear with adequate uh, breathing movements. And his circulation part to large bore IV cannulas was asked to be secured. And Just leads connected. Uh, chest leads was connected and the monitor showed a uh, uh, like rhythm of sinus bradycardia with a heart rate of 40. Since the patient had a BP of 80 by 50 which was fitting into a criteria of unstable bradycardia uh, which includes like any history of hypotension, any ischemic uh, like chest pain, any features of heart failure, any altered mentation, we will take it as an unstable bradycardia and we will have to intervene. So, the initial intervention 0.5 mg of atropin IV was uh, asked to be delivered. So, uh, give uh, in injection atropin 0.5 mg IV. Injection atropin 0.5 mg given. So, injection atropin was given and we had uh, checked for the response. So, the patient's heart rate was improving from 40, it was improving. But it was a transient response that it again went back to 41. So, we could take it as not responding to atropin and the second line of management we will have to go for which is a transcutaneous pacing. So, we will have to connect the patient to the uh, pa uh, pacing path should be attached and we have to go for a transcutaneous pacing. So, two uh, pacing pads uh, have to be attached, one below the right clavicle and one at the apex and we have to change the uh, def uh, defibrillator mode to a pacing mode and uh, we have to select the uh, like uh, the rate where, where, where we have to require the pacing and the uh, milliampers of current should be also uh, set for. Before this thing, we have to get the consent, the patient is uh, like uh, conscious, we will have to give adequate sedation and we have to have the uh, uh, crash cart and uh, emergency intubation drugs everything set ready also. Rate set at 60, pacing ampere gradually increasing from 10 milliampere. So, we have to increase the pacing ampere till we get the uh, like capture. pacing capture beat is uh, Make it. Electrical capture occurred at uh, milliampere of 20. Can you check for uh, the increase in BP of sensor? So, uh, the uh, rhythm got captured at like 20 milliampere and uh, we are uh, transcutaneous pacing was done. What is the BP now? Uh, BP uh, 130, 80. So, now there is a physical, good physical capture also. Uh, if there is any improvement in the uh, vital signs or in the uh, symptoms like a uh, change in the mental status or anything, we can know that it uh, adequate uh, uh, response is there with the pacing. So, after the pacing is done, we will have to uh, uh, get the expert cardiology opinion and ideally shift the patient for a transvenous pacing. This is the uh, basic algorithm of bradycardia according to the uh, AHA guidelines.